This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. You may remember that when we were considering audit reports, we said the date uh, on which the audit report was signed was very important because up to that date, auditors are on uh, what's called an active duty. The audit has not ended. After that date, uh, there is a passive duty. So what happens if uh, between uh, the end of the financial year of the company and the signing of the audit report, something occurs? How should this be taken into account? And these are events after the reporting date. Events occurring between the period end and the date of the auditor's report and actually also sometimes facts discovered even after the audit report has been issued. These divide into two categories. First of all, an adjusting event. An adjusting event means that you go to the financial statements and you make effectively a journal entry in the statement of financial position or and or the uh, statement of profit and loss. So when you're actually adjusting the financial statements and what they say, not just the notes, but the statements themselves, the main statements. The only occasions on which you do this <clears throat> is where the event which happened after the reporting date gives you evidence of conditions which existed at the date of the statement of financial position. So we know uh, that uh, when you're looking at receivables, there's always a, a little bit of a question mark over the valuation of those receivables. Uh, will this person pay or not? Uh, and, and what happens therefore, let's say, on the 15th of January, year end being the 31st of December, 15th of January, the company, the customer, the uh, person owing the money to your client goes into liquidation with no hope of anything being paid. Now, the act of going into liquidation occurred after the period end, but that is giving you evidence that if only we'd known it at the 31st of December, the the uh, receivable was doomed. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't going to be paid. It is telling us information which helps us value that receivable at the year end. Uh, similarly, if we discover after year end, uh, maybe we have a pharmaceutical company. Uh, the pharmaceutical company has got inventory of a certain drug low uh, value to lower of cost net realizable value uh, what happens if after year end uh, the, the suddenly some evidence comes out uh, that this drug is dangerous to people and in fact uh, you really can't sell it anymore uh, and really what we're saying is that drug would have to be written off it was always dangerous to people we've just discovered it after year end uh, but this is adding information to the the idea that the drug was worthless at year end. And one other uh, example, what happens in the first few months of the new year where uh, trading has disastrously gone down. Uh, if trading has disastrously declined, uh, there is evidence there pointing towards going concern issues. Uh, and really, if trading goes down in January, February, maybe March as well, if the audit report hasn't been signed by then, it's really telling us that at the end of the year, the 31st of December, the going concern outlook for this company is actually very poor uh, and there should be a note put into the financial statements and probably an emphasis of matter paragraph put into the uh, audit report. <clears throat> the second time, uh, second sort of non-adjusting event are conditions which entirely arose after the date uh, of the statement of financial position. For example, on the 15th of January, your factory burns down. So at the 31st of December, your factory was completely healthy. It was standing there, there was no smoke coming out of it. Uh, but then two weeks later, it burns down. That is a, a non-adjusting event. On the balance sheet at the 31st of December, you would show the factory there at its cost. That's its depreciation. It's a perfectly healthy asset. It existed, we owned it at the time. However, uh, it might be worthwhile, and in fact you would be required to disclose this unfortunate event in the notes to the financial statements. 
uh, how it would obviously be misleading to people if you didn't say, oh, by the way, your factory's burnt down shortly after year end. Next year's sales might be a bit low because we can't make anything. It might even go on, of course, of going concern uh, ramifications as well. <coughs> but at the year end, everything was fine. That is a non-adjusting event. And uh, what you do is probably, almost certainly, you will make a, a note in an extra note in the statement of financial position, but you're not doing any sort of journal entry, any sort of adjustment in the figures. Occasionally, uh, these events happen so late uh, that the financial statements may have been issued, signed, the audit report signed, the financial statement issued to the members. So uh, we have uh, an amount owing at the 31st of December, we get the audit report signed very, very quickly on the 31st of January. And then in early February, a large customer who owed you money on the 31st of December goes into liquidation. Now that is telling us that at the 31st of December, uh, this debt was worthless. Uh, we've only found out about it after this accounts have been signed. And this really means that the financial statements are incorrect. Uh, they have been audited and signed, uh, and they turn out that they have been incorrect. It mightn't be the fault of the auditor. There was maybe no particular sign that this customer is going into liquidation. But nevertheless, the auditor has signed and the company has issued financial statements which are incorrect. What you have to try to do as an auditor is to persuade the company to reissue the accounts, to reissue the financial statement showing the true position. Uh, with an appropriate audit report. If the company refuses to, to do this, and this is a fairly rare kind of a, a situation, if there's something really <coughs> <coughs> if there's something really material which has happened after the uh, re report has been signed and the financial statements have been issued, but relates to events which uh, existed at the balance sheet date, if the company refuses to reissue the financial statements, then the auditors must take steps to circularize the uh, members of the company, uh, effectively saying the financial statements which were issued and which I signed are wrong. And you may remember that the auditor uh, has got certain powers, if you like, to speak at general meetings uh, and to uh, insist that uh, vital information is circularized to the members, because after all, the auditor is responsible to the members and must do right by them.